Yesterday was a Friday in January 2024, which meant that we got to welcome two new players here at the Valley. That is now six new sign-ins through the door over the past three Fridays as the Addicts look to bolster their squad during a very busy January. Michael Appleton's side are back on the road today and we'll be hoping their new faces can inspire them to victory against a Burton Albion team under new management. Martin Patterson was appointed as head coach of the Brewers last week and his side impressed on Monday night against promotion chasing Derby County. With less than 45 minutes until kickoff, let's take a look at what we have coming up. We will hear from Michael Appleton who spoke to Charlton TV ahead of today's game. We've got an interview with Charlton new boy Romani Edmonds-Green and we will take a look at Charlton women's FA Cup victory at Ipswich Town. Well, welcome along. It's a pleasure to have you company here at the Valley. And don't forget that if you're tuning in from worldwide, you can still purchase your match day streaming pass for just £10. Head over to the club website to do so. And I'm delighted to be joined by Alan Kerbishley and Steve Brown. I'm just hoping we haven't incurred any early injuries going on just before air. Brownie, are you all good? You're fit to continue? I'm all right. Thank I'm goodness all, for that. I'm <laughs> fit to be on the bench. I have a... <laughs> He's uppercutted me in the first minute. <laughs> How are you both? So, Curbs, yeah, Blackwall cut. Tunnel today? No tunnel. No tunnel today. No tunnel. Squir swerving yeah, around yeah, it. Yeah, so I've had to come the other way. Yeah. I had to pay me three pound or whatever it is to get over that over that Dartford one. Two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to go back that way. Fuming. Got to Pinches. go back that way. Pinches. It's just just like fifty mile instead of like twenty five. No, but you've only got another two or three weeks here, don't you? I think it's about three or four weeks. Oh, God. God, the way that Curbs is dipping into his pocket, though, is a bit like Charlton in the transfer window. Absolutely. Another, yeah. another busy week, Brownie, and some new faces through the door. What have you made of our activity? Yeah, really positive. Um, at the very least, you're, you're, you're squad building, aren't you, for next season? It, we could get a reaction this season, but at the very least, the building blocks are being put in place for a much longer term uh, project, I think, which is really positive for everyone to see. Well, it's a big overall. Isn't it? I mean, mm. when you look at the goalkeeping situation, that's changed that Michael's basically attacked every department. You know, he's, he's obviously gone to the ball and he's not been happy with a lot of things. But, you know, defenders have come in, midfield players have come in. And obviously we knew we had to do something up top because, you know, with the injuries to Chucks and Miles, uh, you lose Alfie, then we're going to be in a bit of trouble. So they've reacted and, uh, no, great. We must be the most active club in, in, in the four leagues, I would have thought. Absolutely, and it's been a real mixture of kind of loan signings and permanent signings as well. Curbs, you know what it's like to be a manager in the January transfer market. Michael Appleton must be really boosted by the names that they've been able to attract, and in quite a lot of the interviews as well, the players are saying it's having those conversations with Michael. Mm. It's the bigger project, which we know that you used to utilise. You, you uh, used to bring players here to the Valley to yeah, check it out. The other side of it as well is is like the board at the moment. You know, there's lots of clubs out there and they're going, oh, Charlton. Mm. Right, so if they phone if they phone for someone else this week, well, no, we know you've bought, you've bought him, you've yeah. done that. So suddenly the prices are going up and the wages are going up, but that's the way it is. But we've been so active early on, which is great. Uh, and as Brownie said, I think I think they've come out and made a statement that I think uh, the talk last week was we look, you know, perhaps this season, um, you know, we're so so far away from the playoffs at the moment, but you know, perhaps this season, uh, what we're concentrating is making sure the squad is strong enough to start next season. Yeah, a real trait throughout the signings as well has been the number of them that have achieved promotion out of League One into the Championship. They're winners, Brownie, and mm. they're not going to settle for the season being over yet from a personal point of view and, and for the team that they've just joined. Yeah, uh, and another thing is they want to settle in on a positive. So let, let's say we, we don't get anywhere near the playoffs this year, but they settle in and they're positive and the fans can see that actually we've made improvements across multiple positions. And I said the one crime really over the last three years is we haven't actually got a foundation to build around. What I'm seeing here, you've got 28 years old, 25 years old, you've got Connor Coventry dropping out of a Premier League side. You know, and I know he didn't break into the first team, but he is, he is well sought after. So you've got players like that, you're putting down the spine, you're building a foundation to move forward next season. So when we get to the summer, you're not needing 11 players. You know, so I think this is a real big move from the football club and, and, and fair play to the board because someone is... And then people go, oh, there's a couple of loans in there. But Backinson's got six months, so we get a free look. That could be a, a done deal in the summer if he likes it here and we like him. I think uh, Ladapo, I think there were some complications on that one. I think it was supposed to be permanent, but a little late complication meant loan for now. 
but you know, again, well, pre- perhaps the price changed. You oh know, yeah, maybe. Deals being maybe. Done. Well, there yeah. are all those intricacies as well because we yeah. don't know what players' individual terms are with their clubs. It's yeah. a bit of a minefield to, to sort of navigate well, your think, way around. I think the other side of it as well is that you've got to realise that a lot of these players are coming from a long way away, and they've got to settle in houses. You know, so the liaison officer uh, will have a lot of work to do. But you know, it's not going to be instant that they settle down, their wives or their their families, their girlfriend, or whatever, you know, it's this whole thing that, that you're incorporating, not just bringing a footballer in, you know, so you've got to deal with that as well. So this settling in period, as Brownie just called it, is OK, but there has got to be positive signs that the, the, yeah. the signings are better than what we've, what we've had before, um, so that we do be positive in, in the summer. And, you know, what keeps coming out, and I know that, that Michael apparently said that we've got to move on from all the old days and, and perhaps that's been said en- enough that we've got to move on but the reason a lot of people are still fancy this is because of the old days yeah. and they know what can be achieved here and if I was if I was a, a part of the board looking at a 28,000 stadium thinking if we can get in a championship this would be three quarters full or even better because of the size of the clubs in the championship next year so that's got to be our main aim that we are strong enough to give it a right go next year. Of course, I think it's a really interesting point because, of course, football clubs, they need to evolve, they need to modernise, but you reflect on the past and you reflect on your achievements because they form part of the DNA and the traits that you want to have as a football club and identify with. And, and like you say, Curbs, often that is why people want to come to the football club because of yeah. our history well, think, and we're very I proud think, of it. I think Connor was saying that because he's local. Yeah. He knows the size of the club and he knows that, that it's too big to be where we are. Yeah. Um, so things have got to come together. So, firstly, it's the squad. It's what goes on on the pitch, what, what counts. And, and if the team picks up, then the gates will. We know that. So, uh, you know, as Bernie said, it's the, it's, it's the start, I think. Yeah. It's the start. I, I also think, in, in terms of Connor, he's got two very good people at West Ham in terms of Kevin Keane and Mark Robson who would have guided him. And it's not all about what level you're pitching in. It's not always about the money. It's a, it's about what's best for you as a player. And staying local, I think, accounts yeah. for a lot. I so really do. Like yeah, some of these players really are about does. to travel. Yeah. And they're going to be in hotels. He isn't. He's only got to get through the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Which we know can be a hard job. <laughs> you better turn his clothes next week. <laughs> yeah. So if he's got to try and get... Do you in, want to give him a lift? Offer him a lift uh, <laughs> in, in review, Curves. That would be great. But let us know what you think of the new faces that have joined the football club, the work that the board and many, many others around the club, as you mentioned, player liaison, the comms team. It's, it's been a long, long week, but hopefully we'll see the rewards of it this afternoon and you can contact us via WhatsApp. So, shall we find out about the starting 11 then? Charlton TV spoke to our head coach, Michael Appleton, earlier on today. Michael, uh, we're here at uh, the Pirelli Stadium for the game against Burton and uh, two changes to the starting lineup. Do you want to talk us through that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think we've seen the impact that Connor made when he came off the bench um, last week and it's an opportunity for me to have a, a lot of experience at middle of the park. So we pushed up double one to be more of a, an eight and get closer to sort of their deep line midfield players. Um, and the Freddie one was a no-brainer. Obviously, once we were able to sort of get it done yesterday, he's been training with Ipswich, so, you know, he's fit to play. And But we've been missing that and looking for that for the last probably 10 weeks uh, or however long it is since Miles and Chucks haven't been available. So, um, yeah, looking forward to see how that, that pans out. You spoke at a press conference, you said about there being a buzz about the place and, uh, and probably not reflecting the, the slight negativity of, a, of the losing, or the, the non-winning run, I should say, that we've been on. But uh, does the fact that we've got all six new signings in the squad uh, tell a tale on that? I think it does, yeah. I think there's, um, th- there does seem to be a different feel within the group and, um, you know, I'm hoping that sort of translates onto the pitch. And then if it translates on the pitch, we obviously we give the fans something to shout about. It has been a quite uh, feel-good January in that respect. Are we hoping today could be a platform for uh, for what we can do from here on in? I hope so. I hope so. You know, it's easy me saying that here now, and, and I'm aware of that. But the players are in good spirits. They're in a you know decent place, and um, I think on the back of the performance in the second half last week against a good Peter beside, hopefully we can take that into today against Burton. Cheers, Michael. Good luck. Great to hear from head coach Michael Appleton there. So here is confirmation of Charlton's starting lineup for today. Freddie Ladapo will make his Charlton debut against Burton Albion this afternoon. Connor Coventry also starts for the first time after impressing from the bench upon debut last weekend against Peterborough United. Ladapo joined on loan from Ipswich Town on Friday while Coventry signed permanently from West Ham United last week. Fellow new boys Macaulay Gillespie and Romani Edmonds-Green make the bench 
for the first time. Brownie, give me your thoughts on that starting eleven. I mean, the first thing that springs to my mind is that midfield is looking really, really nice. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if I mean they normally get it right, but I thought Dobson would have been sort of sat behind in Coventry, maybe a slightly more advanced. No, I think he just said it there that he wanted Dobbo a little bit higher. higher. Up, well, yeah. okay. Well, he did score a couple when he was asked to get forward a bit more under Dean Holden. But yeah, I mean uh, that is Connor's position, or has where he has played in in, in the past. For West Ham, so that does make sense. But yeah, it, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? In terms of, I think it's been no secret really that Michael prefers the three-five-two system to get two up front. I think Alfie struggles up there on his own, so it's great to see him with a partner. Can they gel? You've got your big man, small man, which is always a classic combination. So let's hope they gel nice and early. The midfield's looking strong in terms of that three. Well, you know, we expect it to be strong. I just, I, I thought Gillespie might make a. Yeah. a start today but you know I think the, the inability to keep clean sheets is, is always under the microscope here you know and uh, and hopefully we can get one today. Shall we mention quickly Brownie Lucas Ness because I think it, it's been relatively straightforward in terms of the centre-back partnership has always been Jones and Hector and with Hector missing due to injury Ness stepped in against Peterborough United it wasn't an easy task and I just felt after we came off air last week that we didn't really perhaps give him the credit he deserved for stepping up into that way where it hasn't been the easiest season for him. No, since his injury, actually. Yeah. He's found it very, very difficult. And uh, yeah, I, I, I actually thought he attacked the ball really well last. We made, made comments in here. I remember making yeah. comments in here off air, the three of us, saying, you know, when that first ball goes up, you want to see a centre-half challenge down the side, above for a header. And I thought Lucas did that particularly well. You're up against one of the... Well, they are the top scorers in the league. So it was a tough afternoon. And you don't mind not keeping a clean sheet against the Peterbers of this world. Um, and I actually thought I actually thought we did OK, particularly second half when we were aggressive on the front foot. When we were attacking, we were, we were switched on in terms of the first ball out. You want to see a continuation of that today? Curbs, I'm not sure if you saw it, but um, the club's Twitter page shared a little clip of Alfie May walking into the physio room where Ladapo was getting treatment. His eyes lit up and he said one word partner he uh, will be relishing the opportunity of playing alongside yeah. Ladapo. talk to me about how you experienced it being a manager when you've got new signings coming in for the squad that's there because surely these boys are going to be boosted by well, the I mean, faces i mean there's instances where new signings have come in and they give everyone a lift i think the fact that we've brought in experienced players the fact that Alfie's thinking, I ain't going to go right wing no more. <laughs> <laughs> it's too up top and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be in a danger area for, and someone's going to take the weight off me, which is what I think Michael mentioned without Chucks, without Miles. Uh, it's been a bit of a struggle. But yeah, when, when new signings come in, um, it, at the training ground there's a bit of a buzz because there's people who are going to be, have their noses put out of joint, obviously. If, I, if I'm a defender at the moment, I've seen these defenders come in, oh, especially in the midfield area. You know, there's going to be so much competition there. You're talking about two ex vastly experienced players not on, even anywhere near the bench because of injuries, Fraser and Hector. Yeah. You know, they've got to fight their way back in if, if we take off at the moment. But no, when new signings come in, it does give everyone a lift. You know, when we signed Clive, it was the first time that we actually brought someone in as opposed to selling. And then when we bought Millsy, Br Brownie... <laughs> <laughs> Let him have it about the mortgage, I was going to say, we know all about the mortgage. No. <laughs> he deserved it, Kurt. No, he no. deserved it. But, he but, walked, but, that way bowls in. I'm letting him have it. But, we, you know, when you bring players in, it does two things. Yeah. If, they're, if they're decent, if, you know, if they impress, or you know they're going to impress because of their quality, first it gives everyone a lift, and then it gives everyone a kick up the backside. Because, you know, you, if you're not in a team, you want to be on the bench. And if you're not, if you're not playing, you want to be in the manager's face. The training every day. That's what you expect. Yeah. You know, that instead of people moping around, you go, no, I've done this. You yeah. know, try and get yourself back in. And, and don't you learn a bit about character? So, so when a defender, like if, when, when Clive walks in, we're like that defenders, get in there, brilliant, because there's no pressure on us. We, we're going to still play. Clive's come in, great striker. When your defender comes in, when your Yowes, your Mills comes in, how, do, how does Brownie react to that? And, and actually, you, you learn about character. So when I go knock on your door and I go, right, where do I sit? And you, you give me your answer. I have a decision to make. Some, some go, I ain't having it. Yeah. Right? And no worries. Off you go. Move on. That's how the squad evolves. And then some will go, OK, well, as long as you're as fair with me as you are with them, that's fine. I don't yeah. mind. I don't mind battling away. He learns a bit about character. And so that's how your squad evolves over a period of time when you've got competition, like serious competition for places. And Brilliant. I think when you look at the teams competing at the top level, not just in League One, but in the Championship and, of course, in the Premier League, that competition and hunger amongst the squad is really, really healthy. And because of injuries 
and the way we've had to rely on academy products perhaps a little earlier than we would have wanted to do curbs that hasn't been a luxury that we've been able to have this season but perhaps especially when we're looking in the next couple of weeks with the the returns that we should be seeing i think terry taylor isn't too far away conor McGrandles, chucks and nike Mm. Michael could have some selection headaches, which yeah. would be lovely. Absolutely. That's, that's what you want. You know, you don't want them knocking on your door every day, but that's what you want. Did you, you have know. a Do Not Disturb sign and Brownie's no. face on it? <laughs> Did you not? No, no, no. Hardly ever went up. No, Hardly ever went up. I just... I'll just let Merv sort it out. Yeah. If they got past Merv. I'd say the most... <laughs> no, Merv and Keith. Yeah, got... yeah, well, Keith was my one. No, no. no. Yeah, Merv, Keith, Merv was the, no. the doom and gloom no, on a no. Friday Keith was, at the, Keith was at the front going, yeah, oh, yeah uh, trying to dissuade. Yeah. And if you got past Keith, then, then Merv would. <laughs> yeah. And if you got past Merv, then I knew I was in for a little yeah. bit of a... bit of a, you know. If I had to make a guess, I'd say John Robertson came and saw you the most. If I had to guess. No, no, no. No? Uh, well... There was some I used to <laughs> pull in. <laughs> Danny Murphy was one. Oh, but, uh, yeah, I was gobbled. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised on that one at all. Look, there's plenty. Well, I say there's plenty of action, but actually we've had some late postponements in League One, but there were due to be a full fixture schedule, and, and many have been lost to the weather, unfortunately. Cheltenham Town against Carlisle United and the fixture between Port Vale and Wickham Wanderers were both postponed yesterday because of frozen pitches. Other key fixtures include Bristol Rovers hosting Blackpool, Fleetwood Town against a Portsmouth side who still top the table but are struggling for form. And Leighton Orient, I know their game is, yeah, that's going ahead. They beat Portsmouth last week. They're hosting Bolton Wanderers and the surge in Derby County travel to Lincoln City. One game that I know did get postponed late on is that between Stevenage and Barnsley, which was going to kind of be one of your picks down the bottom end of the division, wasn't it, Brownie? But literally, I think about half an hour ago, frustratingly for, for travelling and home supporters, that one um, got pulled. Any other games standing out to you? No, I think, I think if you take that one out in terms of what was going on near the playoffs, you've got to start looking, you know, realistically, we've got to just start looking at the exit of Cambridge ones and hope they draw. You know, because you don't want you don't want any of the ones below us really getting a little bit ahead of steam, and uh, we're going to be safe as ours is. That would be my prediction. But yeah, I th I, th I think in terms of you say Leighton Orient was going ahead. Leighton Orient's going ahead, but interestingly, Oxford United's game against Northampton Town has again fallen victim to the right. weather, so yeah. that means that perhaps Northampton Town with a weekend off will be coming here on Tuesday night with a, a little bit of extra rest. I don't know how these things work. Like from, from your point of view, how does that work? Do you want the rhythm? Do you want to keep building? Oh, some me momentum and, and results. Yeah, yeah, but it depends yeah. where they're at in terms of injuries and, and suspensions. You know, players, uh, they want to play every week, but I don't know what sort of team Northampton will have had out today. Yeah. Uh, so so you know, perhaps someone was going to serve a ban and now he's out for Tuesday. You know, yeah. some things like that just affect you, but... Yes, I, I thought this might have been in danger, actually, Burton. Um, yeah, well, because um, Leicester City women played against Aston Villa last night, Leicester City's ground staff um, loaned them uh, a range of equipment, and apparently right. that was the agreement that yeah. if that game was going to go ahead, although I think we will see a little bit later on that the pitch isn't holding up particularly well, Brownie, from the no, pitch we saw earlier. Great. I mean, it's a bad time of year anyway yeah, for tough. groundsmen's, bless their hearts. You know, they're, 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 they're challenged at this time of year anyway, and if you've got a game on it last night, it does look a little bit bare and a little bit cut up, but the game's on. I'd, I mean, I'd rather it was on. I always think you get these games out of the way. You don't want a backlog. You really don't. I always remember Paul Geary <laughs> coming come to us. As I say, you should have to get past Keith, then Merv. <laughs> the, the cameraman was doing a really nice job there yeah. of, of smartening up yeah. fifth screen yeah. so we could see but that picture. Paul Geary, the groundsman uh, at the training ground and here, and he used to... Same thing, you should get, have to get past Keith first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then Merv, <laughs> before you got to me. Well, I think it's I really don't want you to train over there. No, no, we're training there. Yeah. No, 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 we're training there. No, that's what I was going to ask as well, because I, I was wondering whether this week, in terms of how it impacts teams training, are they like on the phones to all the local 3Gs and stuff like that? But I think at the Valley, um, sorry, at Sparrows Lane, rather, we're quite blessed with a, a number of, of different options. Was it not the case? No. So, no. no. No, I mean, I mean that's what I'm saying. You're, you're in League One with the best facilities this club's ever had. You know, we, we, we weren't, don't get me wrong, we're not playing the violins here, but it was not like, Paul Geary did a great job. We had yeah. two very, very good pitches, but we didn't have an AstroTurf we could just, yeah. like, and the thing is, like, and the reason I can tell you this is because whenever we went AstroTurf, which we had to do from time to time, I was out because of my, yeah. my, my knee injury. Two players can't try. Yeah, yeah, and you have that going on. So you might be preparing for a game on a Saturday, you're forced into an Astro Turf on a Thursday, three of your players can't train. Yeah. You know, so we had that going on back in the day. And we had actually, what the most annoying thing was, we had a dome. 
but it was leased out. You couldn't get on it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you couldn't get up the dome. Next door. Nah, you're not booked it in. It's like, oh. I, found out, I found out a long while ago, Mick McCarthy, when he was at Millwall, uh, if we, I mean, most teams in, in the championship, or whatever, would have a Wednesday off, wouldn't they? It'd be like, train Monday, Tuesday, have Wednesday off, and then train Thursday and Friday. And uh, Mick McCarthy used to take the Millwall boys for a warm-up and run round Sparrows Lane. And if we was off, they used to jump over and train. <laughs> <laughs> He, he knew what day we was off, and then they'd jump over and have a start training. Brilliant. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, look, let's um, move on to Charlton Women now, because we were very fortunate last week to be joined by Carla Humphrey ahead of the team's FA Cup game against Ipswich Town. Despite going a goal behind, I'm pleased to say that the Addicts fought back to win 4-1. So let's take a little look at the match action. So as I mentioned, the Addicts did go a goal behind and, and Curbs, Carla was saying to us how they expected a challenge and when you've just come back from the winter break that is perhaps an yeah. example of being a little bit out in the cold and it's yeah. which ruthlessly punished us. Well I think goalkeepers have got it real tough at the moment, you know playing out from the back and you know as soon as they get caught because they're going to get caught and that is in the Premier League division, you know championship whatever, everyone looks at the goalkeeper and it ain't necessarily all their fault. But we, we recovered. We recovered really, really well. And Jamaican international Mel Playing Johnson out from the scored back again, twice. Look. I know, look at that. And it's the uh, shot from Carla Humphrey, who had a really influential afternoon, actually. She was involved in a number of the set pieces that, that we're going to see. But it was goals um, from Mel Johnson and then a penalty as well, which we'll, we'll see. But really nice to progress. And Curves, I don't know if you've seen the draw, but Karen Hills is going to face her former side Spurs oh, right. in the next round. Well, yeah. Great opportunity. It's um, going to be at Brisbane Road, which is oh, the right. women's home. I'm hoping it's going to be at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. If I want to go to that ground desperately. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good surface. It's just a nightmare I mean, to get to. You're looking to, at this and, and well, going, you've just got to go through the tunnel. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. that's why I don't I'll, want to go, away for us. But if you, look at, if you look at this surface, a couple of passes that have gone across the back line, the ball hasn't stayed on the deck once. It's like, how hard is that for players when it's coming along and you don't you're unpredictable bounce you know you're making that style of play very very difficult Carla's uh, corner causing havoc and then she whips in this delivery as well fantastic to see her I hope she had her burger and involved. chips after the game <laughs> yeah, she, she deserved, definitely deserved them yeah. oh now yeah because you're saying penalty once penalty twice oh, right. it's as if she didn't do enough the first time yeah. uh, and then Freya Godfrey stepped up a really bright young talent on loan with us from Arsenal cool and composed from the penalty spot. Yeah, it is a cool finish, actually. You're right. Just pick the spot. Nice. I like this one. This is Ella Rutherford's back in the side, isn't she, from her ACL? This is her return back, mm. Brownie. This is her first appearance. What a delivery. That and a, a finish from a centre-back. Yeah, I mean, you can't... I mean, that, they're the chances you beg for as a centre-back. But uh, the delivery's everything there, isn't it? Look where that's put. Please put that in the back of the net. That's what that's saying. Yeah, it's look, a great delivery. The girls are in action against Blackburn Rovers tomorrow at the Oakwood in Crayford. Uh, we've, so. uh, we've took notice of them set plays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about exactly. time we score one, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. But no, please go in and support the women's team if you haven't got any plans for tomorrow. Now let's move on to the PSA testing because when Portsmouth visit the Valley on Saturday the 24th, it's also going to be the club's annual PSA testing day. The PSA test is a blood test that measures the amount of prostate-specific antigen, PSA, in your blood to help diagnose prostate problems, including prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is now the third most common cancer in the UK, and early diagnosis is crucial because symptoms do not usually appear until the prostate is large enough to affect the urethra. We would encourage all supporters over the age of 40 to come down and get tested. And for our female supporters as well, please encourage your fathers, brothers, uncles, sons, to make sure that they get tested too. We also have plenty of money to raise for that event, so please make sure that you get donating now. Now, as we've already touched upon, it has been a very busy January for the football club. Six new faces through the door, and we got a glimpse of the potential that one of them has to show last weekend. Connor Coventry coming on. He certainly impressed all of us here in the studio. So we followed him around on his first day at Sparrows Lane. Let's see what our camera's caught. Hi, you're with Harry Eisdale, number 21. This is behind the scenes of going to do medicals with the new signings that we're signing this January. Enjoy. 
Great to get a little glimpse there behind the scenes. I love seeing that. Uh, God damn, you're chuckling away next to me. Sorry. <laughs> we just on a bit, isn't it? <laughs> it yeah, has, a little yeah. Bit. A little bit. Um, Curbs, how did you used to find it when you were trying to bring players like, you know, because Connor Coventry, there was a lot said about the, the, not the extremes, but the lengths that Michael Appleton and Andy oh, Scott went to, but you used went to do Went round his house, didn't they? Yeah, they so, went round his house. I think they had a cup of tea with his mum and dad. <laughs> um, but those things are really important because yes, those absolutely. are the touches. And you were saying off air that uh, oh, you, no. one Clive and one, one of the funniest ones was Clive, because he's come down and I met him at King's Cross Station. And uh, if people know, King's Cross is there and I've parked up opposite and there's a McDonald's, I'm on double yellow lines and whatever. And he's come out, Clive, and got in the car. Um, and we're driving around and I'm thinking, we've got a bit of time before the medical. And he ain't saying too much and he's a bit quiet and I think Alan Buckley, the, the Grimsby manager, is trying to get him to stop him signing because he's just gone into Grimsby and I, I, he, we had fun. he ain't got his phone on. And all that. So I'm driving back and he's got to have a medical and uh, so I'm driving through the West End. So I thought I'd give him a little trip. So I took him to Buckingham Palace. Just <laughs> 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 to Falcon Square. Did you hear about tour guide for <laughs> yeah, Guy had about an hour to kill before the medical and the medical was in uh, Woodford. Uh, so anyway, I said, look, you know, West End, blah, blah. And I, I'm trying to explain to him where Charlton is, right? <laughs> and as we got nearer to where the medical uh, was going to be, be done, I've ended up in Chigwell. So I said to Clive, Clive, this is Chigwell. I said, and a lot of the West Ham boys live here. I said, this is where I'm over this side. I said, but because I'm over this side, I've got to go through the Blackwood Tunnel, which is a pain. I said, oh, I've got to go the Upper Tunnel or whatever, whatever. And he ain't saying a word to me, right? I said, because you can live, in, live on this side, or really you should live in, in, on the south side. And he still ain't saying nothing. And I went, oh, this is the Spurs training ground, because right? it was going past the Spurs training ground in Chigwell. And then he's gone to me, Chigwell. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, uh, yeah, Chigwell. 
He went, Sharon and Tracy live in Chigwell. <laughs> birds of a feather. Oh. It's the first time he said anything. Do you even right? know birds of a feather? No, I, think, I do know. I do know. I do. That's the trouble with that story. <laughs> well, yeah. I know. Other people don't know. I've, really. gone, I've gone. Oh, right. Yeah, Clive. Yeah, they, yeah, that's right. Thank God you were on top of your sitcoms, eh? Hey, oh, to be able well, to bond with him over that. I know. So, so I've ended up getting him for the medical, but yeah. It was, it, it's the yeah, first time he said cool. anything. First time he said anything to me. I'm thinking, does he want to sign? Does he want to sign? Does he want to sign? I'm trying to give him everything. <laughs> Sharon and Tracy. And that was it, that was all yeah, true. Yeah. That's, why it's important that's what sealed the deal. Yeah. Got it done. Got it's it why done. It's man managers need to stay no, on top of all their sitcoms Alan and Buckley. latest Netflix. Alan <laughs> Buckley was trying to phone him and I was desperate that the phone wouldn't go off like, you know, because he was trying to stop him because he wanted to keep him. So, uh, anyway. I love those stories. And uh, let's just uh, get in contact as well. If you've got any questions you'd like me to pose to, to Brownie and Curbs ahead of kickoff as we approach 3 p.m. Charlton have travelled to Burton Albion today. Two changes made. All six of our January transfer signings are included in the squad, which is interesting to see how that 90 minutes will evolve. Now, Michael has a few more options on the bench as well, as well as players coming in at the Valley. There was also news of a departure this week. Now, Chem Campbell's loan has been terminated. Confirmation of that came through this week. The winner returned to Wolves before going out to Wickham Wanderers. He did well here, Brownie, but perhaps the change in system that it looks like we're going to make now, it, it just didn't suit him as well. I, I think the, more to the point is the signings we've made and the strength in depth we have in midfield now means he probably wasn't going to get a kick. That's, that's the brutal truth of it for me. You look at Coventry, Dobson... Uh, and uh, Backington now, and you've got Taylor coming back, McGrandall's coming back, Fraser. Fraser's still sat there. So, uh, where's he going to get a game? That would that, and what, what's a loan deal if you're not playing? It's it's worthless. So it's the right decision. I yeah, think. Curbs. He has some really good moments with us, but with that competition in midfield and no wingers in a three-five-two system, it feels to me like a decision that worked best for both. It's best for the boy if he's yeah. gone straight out on loan again to to get football. That's the reason he came to us. If he's gone straight back out to, to Wickham. The thing is, when you're loaning players, it's very difficult. If, if they don't get the games, that means the next time you phone that club, you know, is, you're on the back foot if you're trying to loan someone and, and the first loan ain't worked out too well. So, yeah, so, but it's great that he's gone and got games at Wickham. But, yeah, I think that the, I've looked at the, the signings and it's, you know, with Eisted coming back, you know, the, other, the, yeah. the second keeper went out. So every department has been affected by Michael in terms of the people he's brought in, you know. And as we said earlier, you know, if you can't handle it, you can't handle it. If you ain't going to try, if you've been left out now and you can't fight, you don't want to fight to get back in, then great, you've shown your colours. Let's do something about it. We always tend to hear this phrase in football, especially in the modern game where managers do get rotated and changed quite frequently, Brownie, that it's not his squad. But with these sign-ins and over the next few weeks, we're probably going to see more clearly than ever, perhaps, the imprint of Michael Appleton's playing philosophy on the team. Yeah, and look, he came in the building and got got some results quite early and then we've, we've suffered a few injuries. And I, I personally think, you know, I think we've said it many times and, and managers have come and gone and we, we haven't improved. And that's a state of where we were as a team, for whatever reason, the injuries in crucial areas, we haven't found form, whatever. I think now Michael will understand, it comes with the territory when you're a head coach, a manager, that when you start to get players that we would deem, right, okay, now you're, you're your players. You, yeah, and they're your players and they're stronger players than you've had previously, the pressure is on now. Mm. You know, let's, let's be brutally honest, the pressure is on. He may not be under pressure immediately because, like, let's, let's see this settle down. So, you know, you've got to give Michael to the end of the season to implement everything he wants to implement with the players that he's got. I'm not even sure we're done in terms of signings yet. I think there's still more to He's come. made a change to the uh, coaching as well, hasn't he? Yeah, so he's you been know, so. an addition in there with Curtis Fleming, which is, I, I, I've, we said for a long time, you, it's hard to just do it with one other. You, you know, you need, you need you know, others to bounce off of. And you, you kind of need a spread as well of, you know, uh, in terms of someone to take the pressure off you for set pieces, then you need someone who's a bit more defensive minded, which I think Curtis is, uh, and then you've got Michael who's a bit more attack minded. Yeah. So you need that balance across the, the staff in structure, and I, I think he's needed another member of staff. So I think it's a real good move, good positive move. Yeah, a real blend on the pitch, a little bit of a blend in the technical area as well. It's nice to see it beginning to all come together. Of course, we just want that now to formulate well, into three big if, points. If, if we ain't going to do any more business coming in, then you probably want the window to shut. Because there's obviously a couple of players that, that I think are quite attractive to other clubs. Um, 
so yeah let's let's close the window <laughs> <laughs> well look brownie last week you mentioned how in the past you've done a little bit of scouting on Connor Coventry. Yeah. Well, this week with the news of Freddie <laughs> Ladapo, I just wanted to add the string to my bow that actually perhaps I should have put this broadcasting career aside and become a football agent. That photo there is how, a baby faced Charlotte Richardson. Oh, this is 2014, so this is a this is a mm, mid oh, early 20s. Mid early 20s. Mid early 20s. And so okay. let me give some context to people watching. So yeah, that is me on the right hand side alongside Freddie Ladapo, and I was working for the Kent Football Association at the time, and Freddie was playing for Margate, and I can't remember the opposition, but I'm pretty sure he scored a hat trick. I mean, he was a different, different gravy. And I was asked to pick the player of the match and then present him with his bottle of champagne, which I'm still trying to cling on to. Clearly, I wanted to take it home with me as well. But what I will say is that I've got an eye for a talented centre forward, right, so Herbs. You're doing your scouting report and you're selling him to a League One club. What's he got? <laughs> so, I feel like I'm taking your role here, Brownie, becoming the pundit. So, what I really like, I mean, his pace. He had pace to burn. He absolutely terrorised the defence at that level. And he's gone on to prove he took a move to Crystal Palace shortly after. Really like the way that he could play with his back to goal, which, again, I think is something that we've been missing. I, I know. Go, go, go. I know. I love it. You get me talking. I'm just like, I can't stop. But, um, no, I, was, I really like the way he looked in that team. And do you know what I really like as well? It's the fact that he hasn't had the, like, easiest career in terms of that trajectory mm. which is very similar to Alfie May both players yeah. have kind of gone on did, Alfie. Oh, did right. you yeah. yeah when he was was it Herm Bay or something <laughs> like Hive or something yeah he was at Hive I'm sure yeah yeah, yeah. what when you were at Margate I, as well I got given his name yeah no 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 you needed me in your scouting no, I team was, I was Ebbsfleet and I got given his name and I went oh, okay thanks like that you know but I got given hundreds of names well you yeah. know it's like you get given lots of names but uh, so where did you pitch him then where did so I... when you watched him, you give him man a match, he scores a hat trick, are you thinking, is this guy good? Is he good enough for League One? Am I passing him on to an EFL club? <laughs> he went think... straight to Prem. He went straight to Prem after Where... that. Gee, that's oh. a, jump, yeah, that's a jump and a half. Yeah, he went to Palace. Jump... And, uh... I remember that, actually. Yeah. I think there's two things yeah. that Michael brought in. Is it? it looks like pace all yeah. over the pitch. And, and I think he will have a nice dynamic yeah. with me And experience. Well. They're the, they're the two things well, he's brought in. Listen, the, thing, the, the, the signings he has made, if we're going to move on from that, is, is, is that... They've all done something, either they've got promoted out of this league, they've played in the league above, they're a good age as well. You know, yeah. you know we've said about you know, forcing kids in when, when we're not ready to as a football club is, is tough on the kids. Yeah. You know, and some sink, some swim. But we've brought players in that are what I call first team ready. They're, the they're first team ready. And not only they're first team ready, they're dropping down from the league it above. Reminds, it reminds or a little bit what Lenny done. When I first came to the club, um, we just about stayed up. And then in the summer, he brought in six players. Really. Yeah. and uh, you know, changed the whole mentality of, of, of the team and the squad because they was all experienced yeah. players. You know, yeah. Mark Reed and George Shipley and, and you know, Steve Thompson. Just men came yeah. in, and and we needed that because we were enough to sell us. Yeah. So we had to deal with that. But you know, we got promoted. We got promoted with that. Well, I'm delighted to see Freddie join in here. And Michael, if you're watching this and you need anyone to add to your scouting team, I'm happy. I'm happy to go to a few games for you. No worries about that. But look, it has been a fantastic week because we've added some real quality, as the guys were saying, to our squad. And Romani Edmonds Green is another name who joined us from Huddersfield Town. Here is his first exclusive chat with Charlton TV. Romani, welcome to Charlton. What does it mean to you to be here? Um, I'm buzzing to be here, to be fair. Obviously, a South London boy, so I'm just buzzing to be here and be back home, really. And you arrive here with over 100 senior appearances to your name, the majority of which have come in the Championship. What was it about Charlton that made it the right fit for you? Um, I spoke to the manager. I like his ideas, I like his style of play. And as soon as I heard it about the interest, I just wanted to get down there and get going. And you touched on your conversations with Michael Appleton there. What is it that he expects from you? He wants me to be a ball player in centre half, get on the ball. But obviously, at first, I'm a defender, first and foremost, so make sure I do my job there as well. And you've made 16 appearances this season for Huddersfield, and you've been in every match day squad. How excited are you to get going here now? I just can't wait, really. It's just like somewhere to call home now, and like hopefully to solidify my place in the team. and hopefully pick up results and climb up the table. And you played a big part in Rotherham's promotion to the Championship in the 2021-22 season. What are your memories of that and, and how much will that experience help you now, do you think? 
It helped me a lot, really, obviously, playing in League One before and getting promoted. And I can take that experience and bring it here and hopefully get another promotion under my belt. And you made your league debut for Huddersfield at the Valley, coincidentally. What are your memories of, of that night and playing at the Valley? It was very electric. Um, the fans were... Obviously, it was the, I was on the other team, but it was still a great atmosphere to play in and I can't wait to get out of there and play at the Valley again. And for those fans that maybe didn't see you on that night, what can they expect to see from you as a player? Someone that wants to get on the ball, someone that's brave and someone that loves to defend, really, and can maybe chip in with a few goals. And as you said earlier, you were obviously born and raised in London. How nice is it to be back in familiar territory? Oh, it's... Um, it's amazing really being back here, close to family and loved ones, so I'm over the moon really. And just lastly, you've got a few familiar faces here at Charlton as well. How much does that help when you're coming into a new club? Yeah, obviously the boys have welcomed me in amazingly, so. But I, all the f familiar faces have helped as well, like I know Tayo, so like, he's helped me settle in even more. Great to hear from Amani there, also known as Reg, which might make it slightly <laughs> yeah. easier when you've got a double, well, double, double I'll just name. Thinking, I'll, just, no, I'll just think all these new names and, and the length of the names, fully in the team shirt, you know, I'll have gone Merv, you do that. <laughs> 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 I don't want to make no yeah. spelling mistakes. <laughs> well, look, there is confirmation of the starting 11s for both teams today. Two changes made by the Addicts. We can see Freddie Ladapo being handed his debut and also Connor Coventry starting the game as well. Well, can I get your, your final thoughts ahead of kickoff before I, I post some of the questions we've had through on, on WhatsApp? Brownie, we were feeling really optimistic and boy, the same energy that I imagine the squad felt mm -hmm. travelling yeah. up this week. Yeah, but then they, they've probably got an air of optimism as well. They've changed their manager, he's just come in. It wasn't the worst performance at Derby. You know, they, they've they actually yeah. got it back to 2 2. And, and, it was and, a late, and, yeah, late goal, and, wasn't and it? they're quite competitive at home. A couple of 1 0 wins against decent sides and a 1 1 draw. So they're, they're, they're a different animal at home than they are away. However, I think it's a new era for us. And I, don't, I, I think there are players uh, will be buoyed by what they've seen this week. Um, certainly the ones that are still in the side today. Uh, there's additions there that will make us stronger. And, and, I, and I, do, I do expect there to be an upward curve, actually, in, in the next sort of three, four weeks. And hopefully it starts today. We've had some messages through on WhatsApp. Tom Jackson said, Freddie Lapo, I know him well when he was playing for Margate. Yep, you and I both, Tom. Great to see. We've got that synergy there. Um, had a question through as well from Mickey in Warlingham asking, do Curbs and Brownie think it's too late for a playoff place this year? I mean, I think we're 19 points off at Curbs. That is quite a considerable amount. But yeah, I, I think so. I yeah. think we need, unless we do something drastic, like go unbeaten for 14 games, <laughs> something like that. But no, I, I'm, I'm looking at two things today because I think what Michael's been saying about the signings,